This is the NSCAA-TV September 23rd presentation of the 2014 Men's College Soccer Review. And it comes to you right now, right here on NSCAA-TV. I'm not sure if it gets more beautiful than Santa Barbara, California. And in fact, this is the most beautiful place to watch a college soccer game since 2007. Harder Stadium, Meredith Field on the campus of UCSB had led college soccer in attendance. Almost 50,000 packed the stadiums just a year ago. And we're here today as UCSB will face UCLA right here on NSCAA TV. Hello, buddy. I'm Dean Linky, proud to be the voice of NSCAA and thrilled to be in Santa Barbara where Tim Bobstig has done an amazing job on the field and in the stands. We'll have more on that a little bit later. Let's take a look at what's on tap today. A big show for you as, in fact, Tim Bobstig will join us. We'll take a look at the NSCAA Continental Tire Top 25. We'll break down Division 2 and 3, even some junior college and NAIA, and look at our upcoming broadcast schedule. And, of course, we'll do it with a little help from my good friend, the former Georgetown coach, Keith Tabatsik. And, Keith, first off, this place is so beautiful. It's great to be here. Well, I tell you what, every time I've been here, not only is it a beautiful place to watch, it's been beautiful soccer on the field as well, and I, I don't think tonight would be any different. In fact, Dean, I'm not sure that there's going to be any time you could watch two teams in the NCAA with so many technically gifted players and you're going to see tonight. It's going to be fun. A lot of big stories in Division One. We saw Louisville kill Duke, and then Duke turned around and beat North Carolina, the number one team in the country. Yeah, last night at Koskinen Stadium, over 4,000 people there. Sean Davis, the hero, a goal and assist for John Kerr Jr.'s Duke Blue Devil beating uh, UNC the number one and by the way when you talk about number one we've had a few of them this year there's going to be another one next week after this loss but there's, that wasn't the only upset last night as well Virginia Tech defeating Wake Forest and then we featured Utah Valley in their first ever game on NSCA TV last night their first ever win against the top 25 team they defeat Denver two to one and a come from behind for Greg Moss's team back to this one UCLA they were number one for a little bit under Jorge Salcedo yeah they were number one until they were knocked off in an upset by American University University in overtime. Uh, they have tied two in a row right now, struggling to score goals, and I think that's a big issue. A lot of talent out there trying to put it into the net. Turning it back to Santa Barbara, what a job Tim Bobstig has done. Well, the thing is, is when you talk about Santa Barbara, all right, you talk about more than just a soccer program, the atmosphere that they build here, the community outreach, right, and why they come and watch games here. And you know, they, they've hosted the College Cup here. In my opinion, they should host the College Cup here a lot as well because it's such a perfect place to, to come to watch that game here. And, you know, on the field, off the field, everything great. All right, let's take a look at the credentials of Tim Bobstein. Now in his 16th season, of course, they won the national championship in 2006. He's got seven Big West titles just in the last 13 years, and he's been the NSCAA Coach of the Year, not once, but twice. And as promised, we're joined by the big man as I look up to him, Tim Bobstein. And Tim, first of all, thanks for having us. This is such a special place to watch college soccer. Well, we're happy to have you. Uh, we, we like to open up the window to everybody in terms of getting a glimpse into what we get to enjoy every single day. Uh, you are correct. This is uh, It's a great place to play soccer. It's a great surface. It's a great facility. Uh, it is one of these stadiums that for some reason when football left here, uh, they left behind a, a just a tremendous uh, setup for us in terms of soccer. And so we're excited anytime we get to have people come and, and, and take in the game. And tonight is one of those special nights because we, we do have, I think, two excellent teams with great players all over the place. Not that long ago, eight years, in fact, 2006, you won the national championship. Take us down memory lane. Well, it was uh, a unique uh, season, obviously, because UCSB um, – uh, it was funny because UCLA was trying to celebrate their 100th championship. We were trying to get two uh, in all sports. So for us, winning national championships are, are tough to come by. Uh, but we had an opportunity that season with a team that actually at one point was seven and six and going nowhere. Uh, we were able to turn that year around. Uh, again, a lot of credit to our seniors and our upperclassmen that year. Uh, we finished with uh, winning 11 out of 12 games that year. And the irony of it is that we had lost to UCLA 3-1 here at Harder Stadium earlier in the year and then played them in St. Louis in about 18 degrees for the national championship. Well, finally, before we get to work, you believe that with this young team in a couple years, you could win another one. 
Well, I mean, we, we started this, uh, again, this conversation about uh, what it's going to take to play the way we want to play and, and showcase the players and have players move on at the, to the next level. And, and obviously, college soccer, is, is, uh, it's an opportunity for these players to grow in a lot of different ways. Um, what we have done in the past to fill in from the losses that we've had you know, to the, uh, to the next level, uh, we've filled in quite a bit with some international players and uh, some transfers. And um, we made a concerted effort literally a year ago, two years ago, uh, because of the opportunities that presented themselves to bring in uh, freshmen, uh, very, very talented, but a number of them. Last year, we started five freshmen. This year, we will start another four or five freshmen. Uh, collectively, we have 19 freshmen and sophomores, uh, not only in the program, but a majority of them playing on the field tonight. Super exciting. Let's go to work now and take a look at the NSCA Continental Tire Top 25. Now, keep in mind, this was as of September 16th, and this show will air September 23rd. So it's going to change because North Carolina lost to Duke. But your thoughts on the first 10 there, Coach? Well, we, uh, I guess we're, we're again, we, we always root for our West Coast uh, schools. And, of course, you, right off the top 10, you've got you know UCLA, New Mexico, uh, Irvine, Washington uh, right there. So literally half the squad or, I mean, half the list is uh, our, our West Coast contingent. And uh, for us and for a, a team like ours at UCSB, we always say that to get out of the West, uh, to play these teams that we play consistently like the game tonight, um, is you have to be very good and you have to be able to compete. So... Uh, again, we're we're actually pretty happy with with that top ten. Other than it's it's missing a school right here, so <laughs> we'll get see there if at some sure. point we can get there. Kenny Lola's Louisville team that we saw last week at that beautiful stadium at number nine, and smiling Bob Warming Penn State at number ten. Let's flip the chart here at the NSCA Continental Tire Top 25 and go 11 to 20. And there's some new schools in there, Delaware, and how about Keith Tabasnik American team at number 12? They beat UCLA. Well, I, it'll be interesting because I think, uh, again, I'm sure this this is going to air, but Delaware made the trip out here to play Cal and uh, Stanford this weekend and uh, lost to Cal, and we'll see how they do. So it's, it's interesting as some of these teams start to make their way onto this poll who maybe aren't familiar names, and, uh, and then it's interesting to see the reaction uh, to getting finally ranked. And uh, again, I think, as you mentioned, especially early in the season, you're going to see some teams bounce in and out uh, of this poll based on, obviously, performances. But certainly, as they move into this last phase of, of non-conference games before most of us start conference in a week or so. Michigan State, led by Damon Rensing, went into Maryland in front of the crew and beat the Terps one to nothing on Friday night. We'll see George Mason play Virginia right here on NSCA TV in just a couple weeks. All right, the final five here, Tim Bob Steig of your NSCA Continental Tire Top 25 and the Naval Academy. We saw them last year. They're very good. Well, it's interesting. Uh, it's it's a team that uh, works really, really hard. I, I mean, they we've always talked about it that uh, you know there's certain places where you have a home field advantage, and uh, that's a program that's. Uh, um, I mean, of course, has a coach who came over having a lot of success at Division II level and, uh, and now is doing well there. But again, uh, a place like Denver, very, very difficult to win at Denver, very, very difficult to win at Stanford. We experienced that a week and a half ago. So again, um, most of the teams that you're seeing now, I mean, the record's 3-2, 3-1, 3-1, 4-1. Um, it is still really, really early. And the thing that you don't find on that list is a lot of undefeated teams. All right, well, finally, we'll bring Tim Bomsteeg back in and we'll ask him one question. There's a lot of talk about splitting college soccer into two seasons right now. Where do you stand on that, Coach? Well, we are, I mean, supportive would be an understatement. Um, and I think at the top of the list is, is the idea that we really want to develop the players. I mean, our, our idea right now is uh, we have campuses like ours. We have tremendous training facilities. We have great places to play like Carter Stadium. And uh, if we're given the opportunity to basically do what we've done this week, it's very ironic that you asked this question because uh, we had a single game, one single game on Saturday to get ready for UCLA, and they're the same. We both decided that to prepare for this game, we would like to have a week to where we can just train. Uh, we could take our time with the game. We wouldn't have to be taxing the players, asking so much of them, especially when they're going to school with everything else that's going on. So the idea that we had one week to prepare for this game, the unfortunate thing is this is the only week we have this. Um, but that, that to me is what college soccer should be. And I think you're going to see it on the field tonight. You, you're going to see a really, really good game tonight because not only do you have talented players, but these players have had a week to prepare for this game.
The man is passionate about college soccer, passionate about UCSB. Tim Bomstig, always a pleasure. Thanks for all you do for college no, soccer. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me. All right, we come back. The former Georgetown coach Keith DeBatsnick will join me again as you're watching the Men's College Soccer Review Show right here on NSCAA TV. You watch the match live. You road trip to the away games. You rise and fall with every run. Above all, you live your love of the game. Whatever you do, get there with Continental Tires and improve your grip with extreme contact traction. Continental Tire, for what you do. NCAA convention to me is probably the best place to get any sort of education of a wide variety that you can go in the world. It's always nice to see who you wander across in the hallways, might have a quick word with. So I think it's exciting to meet youth coaches and high school coaches and even college coaches who are all really passionate about the sport. It's a learning experience. I think it's invaluable both from a coach standpoint and from an administrative standpoint. Not a bad gig doing the men's college soccer review show from Santa Barbara, California. Harder Stadium. This place will be rocking here in a little bit with five, six, maybe even 7,000 people as it gets set for UCSB and UCLA. We welcome back Keith Tabatsnik here as the men's college soccer review show rolls on. And Keith, Tim Bomsteeg, that man, he really is passionate. Well, he is. Everyone knows that. It's no secret. You know, he, and you know exactly what he <laughs> thinks about everything, you know, off the field and on the field. All right, let's take a look now at the goings on in the rest of college soccer. And we'll start with Division II here, NCAA Men's Division II Soccer. Southern New Hampshire still number one under Coach Hubbard. Simon Fraser now 17. They were number two in Cal State Chico up to number five from 16. Yeah, we see all those changes there. 11 teams dropped out of the top 25 last week in Division II. Division II is deep. Even Lynn University is in. They were receiving votes, and they're at number six right now after a 3-0 and start going into this weekend. Let's roll to Division Three men and the big stories here. At Division Three. Messiah and Kenyon, one and two. They are so good. SUNY Oneata is the new number three, and Emory has moved up in the top ten. Yeah, Emory up in the top ten, but you know, the top three that they have, they're collecting collectively 16 and 0 right now and a big shout out to the longtime coach at Brandeis Mike Coven his team is back in the mix at number 5 at a 5 and 0 start let's roll to junior college now first NJCAA Division 1 Iowa Western coach Carver Keeps his team at number one despite a tie last week. Yavapai, home of Roger Espinoza and Georgia Perimeter undefeated in Illinois Central now in the top ten. You know, I tell you what, it, it, Yavapai is now the home of Jason Romero. Already 14 goals on the season. Just one behind College of Southern Maryland's Sean Boussiar, right, for the lead in in the NJCAA Division I men. Let's go to Division Three, also in junior college and take a look at the storylines. The reigning champs, Herkimer County, still number one in Mohawk, Mohawk Valley 7-1-0. and oh. Well let, let's keep talking about goal scores because that's why Herkimer County retains the number one spot. Ben Polk 14 goals on the year four game winning goals. Finally NAIA coming into the weekend a trio of unranked programs Aquinas of Michigan, Texas at Brownsville and Union from Kentucky are undefeated and are tied with the most wins in the NAIA at six. Number three Lindsey Wilson from Kentucky and Northwest from Washington are right behind with a 5-0 and record. 12 programs overall are unbeaten on the young season. Of course, defending national champion Martin Methodist held the longest unbeaten actress streak in the NAI at 15 games before falling 3-1 to to number 18 Thomas on September 12th. 
Well, Dean, Coach Tom Maxson of Morningside in Iowa has a chance this year to join that Elite 200 win club. He stands 194, 139, and 20 in his 20th year. And Aldeny Mendez of Aquinas in Michigan currently holds the NAI lead in total goals scored with 12 in six matches. Mendez has posted two separate hat tricks so far. Two other players are right behind with 11 goals apiece. Remind you that the NAIA Men's Soccer National Championship for the next two years will take place at a new site, Hilltopper Stadium in Delray Beach, Florida. All right, a lot more exciting games coming up on NSCAA TV as we bring you the broadcast schedule of the games coming up, particularly at the Division I level. We know on Friday night we've got High Point and we've got Asheville, two quality North Carolina schools. Yeah, I tell you what, going down to High Point, one of the things that seems to happen every time under the spotlight is a lot of goals down there, an exciting team to go watch play right after that. Up to Bucknell, Bob Warren brings his hot Penn State team into Bucknell. Against Brendan Nash, you see UConn, and Tulsa, Ray Reed, Tom McIntosh. We mentioned Duke knocking off North Carolina. They'll host Davidson. And then, of course, Akron and West Virginia. Other broadcasts as we don't just put on Division I games. You've got Division II as well. Some exciting games, including a doubleheader with men and women, Barry and Florida Southern. And we've also got Division Three and NEIA games as well on NSCAA TV. Ohio Westland and Ohio Northern. Legendary coach there. Yeah, well, absolutely. And, in fact, also the big rivalry in Ohio as well. And then the NAIA slate of games as well, Dean. All right. It's all brought to you, of course, by the good friends of Continental Tire. I want to thank Travis Roffler and all the good folks from Continental Tire for all they do supporting the NSCAA and the NSCAA TV Game of the Week. And speaking of thank yous, let's pop that up there as well. I want to thank Joe Cummings and everybody out in Kansas City, especially Kathleen Hermesh for getting it done, Kyle Lang, but Andrew Leahy and his crew as well for helping with the show right here in Santa Barbara. My broadcast partners, Keith Tabasic, want to thank Tim Vomstig. I'm Dean Linky saying thank you one more time for watching all of it right here on NSCAA-TV, where the message is learn, participate, belong.